Hi and welcome to the Her Business Program. I'm Susie Daphnis. My guest today is Eric Qualman. Eric is the author of Social Nomics. The book made Amazon's number one best-selling list only three weeks after it was published. Eric is a frequently requested international speaker and a professor of digital marketing at the Holt International School of Business. Enjoy this interview with Eric Qualman. Yeah, so I was doing mainly search stuff, and so I was speaking on the search circuit and also writing a column for Search Engine Watch, and so I was talking with the editor saying, look, you know, my cousin, who's 17, she's on this thing called MySpace, and I really think that social media is going to be gigantic, um, and at the beginning they're going, no, you know, you talk on search, just keep writing about search and speak on search, and so I became that Chinese water torture, right. and so over time they <laughs> said, okay, them, yeah. you be the guy talking about social media. <laughs> Um, in the first session, I knew it was going to be big to where it was standing room only in New York and there was 500 people and they couldn't bring in other people in there. And I go, okay, I'm not crazy. I think this thing's going to have some legs. And then all of a sudden, even looking back a year ago, you talk to companies and they go, should we or shouldn't we do social? And I'm sitting there going, it's not up to you. People are doing this with or without you. They're going to take control of your brand. Um, they're, they're, they're taking ownership, so get out there and have a voice and a say in there. And now we're here a year from that, right. and no one asks that question. Now it's how do we do more, what's the return, you know, what are some of the key mm. tips and tricks that we can do within social media to, to get things handled? Well, that video you showed today, I first came across that one of the universities in Australia is using it as part of a social media course. Yes. And a friend had done the course and sent me the link. I had no idea that you'd, you'd produce that. How long ago now? I guess it was in August. And I remember they reached out to me. A lot of the universities are using not only the book, but also the video to try to help teach students and, and get them learned up, which is great to see because you don't want to be taught talking about the four P's and marketing in these no. marketing classes. And no. so, um, and that's why I'm a professor at the whole school of business. So I'm also trying to get these people digitally ready because it's, it's on top of us. And to be effective in the workplace, you need to know how to do this stuff. Our community is women mostly in small business. And so they've got very few resources. So um, the question I always get is, well, how much time should I dedicate to yeah. this? Is it really, does it really work for me as a small business owner? Um, and well, based on what I've read in your book, absolutely, like you said, if their customers there, they yeah. need to be there. Um, is there any particular area that you would focus on if you had very few resources? If you have very few resources, just making sure that you're listening. So if you talk about four, I talk about social media escalator, that there's four steps in social media, and it's really listen, interact, react, and then sell. So it's listen to what's being said about your small business and about you, if, if you've got a personal brand as, as the CEO or the owner of that small business. Um, and then it's really to react, I mean to interact, to start out there and start joining that conversation. Then the third is to react. If they say they like this about your product, then do more of that. If they say they don't like this, then try to adjust the product um, to fix that. And the fourth thing is to sell. And that kind of happens by itself if you do the first th three things right. A lot of people make the mistake of jumping in and trying to sell. What does that look like? That's if you were to set up a Twitter account today and all of a sudden push out, mm -hmm. hey, come buy my product, it's great. That's the old kind of marketing right. shouting. Uh, but if I had to narrow it down to one thing, is just make sure that you're listening out there to make sure that you know what people are saying about you and your product. And it's a beautiful thing because if it's a small business owner, you walk in the street, what's the greatest thing that can happen is if a customer comes up and goes, hey, you're X, Y, and Z. I didn't know you produced that. Here's what I love about it. Here's what I changed. That is so valuable. But some people get so transfixed on what's the return on investment. Yeah. How do you, you can't measure that. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk about a big company like Ford, they've changed their entire culture and it's being led a lot by what the great stuff of Scott Monty and James Farley are doing. And it's really coming down from Alan Mulally, their CEO, is that we understand that it's not what we say, it's what is said about us by our users. Uh, and so how do you measure a whole cultural shift within Ford to where now it adjusts the product, to where they're adjusting it so that you can send out a tweet verbally while you're driving, or to have Pandora piped in through your, through your uh, radio, and also have it sync with your iTunes when you pull into your garage. And so that's the real power of social media is it transcends the entire business, whether you're big or small. Okay, I have two questions. When I mentioned I was going to be talking to you today, I had two, two particular questions. One is if you're a retailer of a, something that's a bit of a commodity like yeah. vitamins and you have a vitamin store yeah. uh, and people tend to shop say you're an online retailer by price can you use social media to differentiate yourself even if price is really what the customer is looking for I think you can now just take a huge step back is that if you look at there's different 
potential for different industry and different products. And I'm not going to pretend to know the vitamin industry or know that specific individual small business owner store. Mm. Uh, but it's kind of to ask the right questions from a standpoint of, let's say, the, the airline industry. That has probably at a scale of 10, maybe a 9 or 10 in terms of potential within social media to where if you're looking at your actually produ producer of stealth bombers, mm -hmm. there's probably a, a 1 out of 10, but there's still a play from a standpoint of if I do a fan page, I'm not going to sell more stealth bombers to the government, right. but if I'm out there listening and see that people are saying we shouldn't be spending billions of dollars on these stealth bombers because of X, Y, and Z, that it, you can kind of get the information out there and say, here's why stealth bombers actually save money and also save lives. Um, and so there is that, that one. There's always a play. Right. But it's really trying to figure out what's the potential in there. And so with the vitamins, let's say it's a, maybe a four or a five out of ten. Um, and the beauty is what you can find out is go out there and see if there's any chatter that's already happening around, right. not your specific brand, but around that marketplace. And going out and seeing, there's no such thing as a new idea. Mm -hmm. So it's really, I always say, instead of beg, borrow, and steal yeah. on the web, it's really beg, borrow, and make better. Okay. Um, and so it's really, if you can focus on that, figure out what other people are doing. And then the beauty is your customer is going to showcase and also tell you what they want via social media. So you don't have to sit in an office and think of for hours and months on end kind of the old mm. and it's quick isn't yeah, it they'll quick. tell you really they'll quickly you right, right once away. you it's a real time feedback so yeah. it's not this madman society right. to where you're sitting for years figuring out the strategy of a 30 second commercial <laughs> it's really get out there i always say fail forward fail fast fail better you're not gonna do it right the first time so just make sure you adjust and react and do it better than, as you move Thank you. Okay, and the final question was one which you may have heard a bit, and that is, does social media give us more shallow relationships than fewer deep relationships, which is, I guess, what the person was saying we had before social media? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not a psychiatrist, but a lot of people ask the question of, they, they think of it as an and-or type of thing. Right. So if you look at it from, if you're, you know, a mom, and your daughter goes off to college, in today's world, what it allows for is, a deeper relationship and I'd argue a deeper relationship because what it does is it doesn't replace your daughter's still going to come home and have that home cooked meal with the family right. but what it does is it allows you to stay connected with her in an unobtrusive manner to where she might be posting I just aced my exam I'm going out to celebrate all of a sudden you're at the supermarket and you just kind of reach out and go you know I'm going to send her a $20 gift certificate to Starbucks just to say I'm thinking about you and congratulations on acing that exam um, and so it's real fun I was actually just in Paris because some of the new trend that, and I'm kind of hopping around here, but right. if you look at it, because some people will see if this happens, but they think that the kids, so under 20, mm -hmm. are not going to like having their parents and grandparents Online, on social media. Right. And so is there going to be a play? And my, my space actually might do this, where they go, okay, we're just going to be for under 20. Right. And if you look at Spain, there's a site, T-U-E-N-T-I, 20, yeah. uh, and that's designed for under 20-year-olds. So we'll keep an eye on that. But I was just in Paris in a focus group, uh, with the whole school business and what we looked at was we asked them you know do you like having your parents and grandparents on social media and they said at first no did right. not like that you saw the media reaction and then over time i realized actually this is such a big benefit the benefits outweigh the negative pieces um, and so in my mind i think it's a great thing to where the daughter analogy where she goes off to university uh -huh. is that you strengthen that relationship and instead of doing the how's it going Give me the 411 or the, the basics when uh -huh. you get home. It's like, let's just get in the deep. I know what you've been doing. Right. And so let's just get in the In real heart. time. Let's get in the deep, you know deep understanding. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Eric Qualman. I highly recommend you get a copy of his book, Social Nomics, and visit his blog at socialnomics.net. I'm Susie Daphnis of the Australian Business Women's Network, and we're a national online training and mentoring organization for business women. If you're ready to take your business further, ask us today about membership. You can call us on 1300 720 120 or visit our website at www.abn.org.au.